Hey, what up? This is Wang, and today we're gonna talk about how to take advantage of sunlight, part B, which is the wave particle duality of light. When we are talking about fluctuation, we are really talking about refraction, reflection, diffraction, and interference. When we're talking about the particle feature, we're talking about absorption, scattering, nonlinear effect, and others. For the fluctuation part, the refraction is a change in direction of the wave passing from one medium to another, or from a gradual change in the medium. This introduces the refraction index value n, and n equals the c, the speed of light in vacuum divided by V, the speed of light in the material. So here's one more thing you need to know about is with the same angle of incident, the higher the index value N is, the smaller the angle of refraction will be. To apply refraction in architectural design, we have several methods. Let's get back to the exact same room and punch a hole on the roof first. We have the same camera angle, same focal length, same rendering settings, and just same everything. When we apply a normal glass, the room will be something like this. And when we apply much thicker glass, we can tell that the light is shifting to the left. Meanwhile, we'll have a little bit of the light reflection produced by the edge of the glass. And this is the first option of using refraction light, thick glass. The IOR of class is usually larger than 1 and smaller than 2, and IOR is represented for index of refraction. When light itself is not too thick, the effect on light refraction is really minimal. Uh, meanwhile, others just don't matter, no matter you are using a double O E or triple O E or anti glare glass, they just don't matter. The second use is to use non parallel surface of glass. This is how it looks, and let's turn it back to saturation. It should be something like this. When we twist the glass over, it's gonna be something like this. When we apply triangular prisms to the roof, it's gonna be like this. And here is an example, a chapel in Harvard. People from GSD might know this. The architect used three prisms with a specific degree, creates a rainbow effect on the wall behind the cross. And in the Bible, a rainbow is the symbolic of a promise. The third and last use is creating caustics. When you apply your regular medium on the roof, and here's the result. You can also place it on the wall, and that's what you're gonna get. Reflection is a change in direction of a wavefront here is an interface caused by another medium and parts of the wavefront returns into the original medium, and that is called a reflection. The main feature for reflection is the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. As in the diagram, is alpha equals beta. We do have tons of ways to apply this feature. We can also use different materials to cast different patterns, or we can gather a light to pop up some designs. The first diagram here is a reverse monitor, which can also be called a sinking monitor, I guess. And this type of monitor theoretically exists, but it's just super rare to see it in real life. The second diagram is a section of Louis Kahn's Kimball Art Museum. For Louis Kahn, choosing a structure and choosing a light can be equal, which can be brought out at the Kimball Art Museum. For museums, most collections can be exposed to the sunlight. To be more precise, the ultraviolet, and here are two reasons for this. One is that the ultraviolet in sunlight can cause protein decay in oil paint, as well as fibers in rice paper. And the rice paper here is used for traditional Chinese paintings. And the second reason is the photothermal effect will cause a negative impact on the collections. Therefore, the usual practice in the past was using artificial light directly. But at that time, the quality of artificial light was bad, which would cause glare. And when the light hits the exhibition glass frame, due to the lack of glass coating technology, it would reflect a large amount of harsh light, which might hurt visitors' eyes and affect the overall experience. Therefore, 
introduce a natural light seems like a better solution at that time. And then here's the conflict. So you want to use the sunlight and you don't want to use the direct sunlight. What else should you do? Just like any other problems, there's no right or wrong and there's no a straightforward solution for this. Any design that diffuses light is working, such as opening windows on the north side of the building, adding a giant diffuser, or reflect sunlight multiple times to form a diffuse sunlight like Louis Kahn. Thanks to the technology nowadays, the museums are able to use mixed light sources. For example, just go check out Guardian Art Center in Beijing. The benefit of this is phenomenal. The orientation of the site is less considered, for example, SF MoMA. The third diagram is probably the most common one. Here are two examples. One is Ventana House, which is located in Tucson and designed by HK Associates, a company funded by one of my teachers in college. The project itself is located in a desert area, and the average temperature in summer is about 110 Fahrenheit, which will have a large amount of heat gathering in the west from 2 p.m. From the master plan, the street skyline in the most important social areas are oriented north-south. This orientation can ensure that under sufficient light condition, it will reduce the sunlight in the afternoon from west to a certain extent, so as to slow down the heat collection of the space. The logic of gable roof is to gather the hot air on the tip of the gable, thereby make the human activity space more comfortable. Another thing I got pointed out is that if the skylight is operable, open it for a period of time before darkness can accelerate the air ventilation, and this will take away heat rapidly. This principle is related to atmosphere pressure, specific heat capacity of air, and specific heat capacity of sand. The other example is designed by me. Uh, the project is located in Wuhan. The resident is a duplex on the sixth floor. The duplex is surrounded by other buildings, which cause the lighting on the first floor to be poor, formally to bring light from the second floor. You can poke holes in the second floor's ground. Either it's gonna be not efficient, or it will just have some privacy issues. Another way we can do is creating a terminal that allows sunlight coming through directly from the outside. In this situation, we will have to remodel the whole structure, which involves way too much stuff. Fortunately, the same place on the second floor of the residential place is the balcony. There are plenty of rooms to play with. The design dimensions was kind of nailed, which was about to do a strip skylight, and in fact, it was to choose in the following three types. With all considerations, we decided to use the first type, which also satisfied the ergonomics on the second floor. Meanwhile, we can find that color matters and texture matters. With this use, we can efficiently reduce the amount of light or add some texture to our sunlight. And here are two examples. The first example is hold on, Casa Gilardi, which is designed by Luis Barragan. Like all of his work, all the spaces offer a multitude of sensation through the play of light, colors, distribution, and architectural elements. More photos can be found in art that I'll have a link in the description below. The second example is also designed by me in Guiyang. The big idea is to use dark colors to reduce the lighting indoors and the curtain is applied for soften the light. The main reason for the design is that the user of the room was a child who's about like 10 years old. He's probably around like 12 years old right now. Back at that time, he was struggling with inattention and hyperactivity. Soften light can help him with calming down. And at the same time, I require his family to stage with say two theme fragrances as for a choice of color because the room needed to reduce the light intensity. I kinda had to use a dark color, but 
the proportion of this dark color should be not that much. As shown in the picture, I only use blue by the window near the bed. Designing with high altitude, I was dealing with too much sunlight. Although it's not hot out there, even in the summer, it's just not hot. The actual sun was just out there, right in front of my face. As for choice of orange, uh, it is because a householder like a certain brand, which I'm not gonna mention about. Also, the use of light well is a great method to light up the underground levels. Optical fiber is another way to redirect light. As you can see in the diagram, the fiber contains two layers of glass. The outside part is called cladding, and the inside part is called core. So core has a larger IOR than the cladding has, which makes a good reflective interface. So you think that's all of it? Think about it on a larger scale. Shape the world with your imagination and then you'll find it fascinating. For example, why not treat buildings as reflectors? Let's say we have a house. With designing another building inside, we'll have a brighter room. It is kind of weird, right? Like logically, what about let's flip it over? So here's a building facade with high reflectivity in order to moderate introduce the reflective light into the interior. We can design proper windows. And the proper windows here refers to proper size, proper thickness, proper material. Within a large scale of design, to better use this kind of reflection, we can design, including but not limited to parabolic buildings, faceted buildings, inclined buildings, and multi curvature buildings. Last part, let's talk about diffraction and interference together. This is diffraction and this is interference. So, diffraction, interference, diffraction, interference. Let's say you want to see the diffraction, we need to know about the condition first. The wavefront of daylight is around 500 nanometer. To see a clear diffraction of this, we'll need a single split less than around 5000 nanometer. Any single split larger than this won't guarantee you to see this phenomenon. And here's a website about it, I'll leave a link in the description below, you guys can play around with it. Let's say if you do want to see this, you may design a single split of 1mm, which is a little bit longer than 1 32nd an inch. However, in real life, it's just way too hard to construct a single split in a building scale like this. I personally suggest pre-made a hardware like this and then apply this to the frame before construction. And still, this won't guarantee you to see the light diffraction. You might see this in a few seconds a day, or you are just never gonna see it. For the interference part, it's just way too hard to occur. Sometimes you can't even see it in an optical lab. Good morning, uh, it is around like 5.30. Time for quiz. Question one, why do museums open their window in the north facade? So the answer is to use diffuse light. Question two, for a light fluctuation, which of the following feature is really hard to apply in architectural design? A, diffraction, B, reflection, E, interference, and D, diffraction. And the answer for this one is C. Question number three. What kind of drink can be bitter and sweet? Hopefully you guys are not a tea person because the answer is reality. Question number four. Which of the following methods can deliver light to the underground level? A. Light well. B. Optical fiber. C. Louvre system. D. Passive light pipe. And the answer for this one is C. Again, question number five. If I want to apply sunlight refraction in design, uh, well, architectural design, and what can I do? And according to my conclusion, there are three ways. So the first one is going to be the thick glass. The second one is going to be the non-parallel surfaces of glass. And the third one is going to be the caustics. And of course, there are definitely like more ways to achieve this. Just play around with it. And um, I'm probably just going to go hit my cardio for today. And probably just go enjoy my thumbnail, I guess. I'm out. There's also a Chinese version, so if you want to learn some Mandarin, probably just go check it out. And, come and see me next time. Thank you.